Yeah, somebody just sign in. Oh, that's just the sound of it going live, I guess. All right, so we just went live on, on YouTube. Oh, now? Okay. Yeah. So um, if there's anybody watching or if anybody rewinds to the beginning, uh, um, happy Thirsty Thursday. We're on a lockdown 2020. <laughs> um, we are getting set up to do... Uh, this series of webinars to, um, I didn't bring my soundboard, this series of webinars to um, uh, walk you guys through how to set up um, code, test, uh, and deploy a web or data-driven web application uh, on the Microsoft stack and ultimately deploying it to uh, Microsoft Azure. So that's what we're doing. Uh, very casual, informal environment here. Got tiki mask in the background there. Um, oh, I'm not sharing my screen just yet, but uh, let's go ahead and get to that. And this is uh, my homie, Ron. Ron's going to be editing these videos for us. So he's going to edit out any F-bombs that I might drop or any mistakes that I make while, I, uh, while I'm coding this stuff. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let me uh, minimize this. So um, I suppose in the, the more formal edition, I, I might want to have a, um, a PowerPoint or something that says um, uh, full stack web dev, keep it simple. And let's see, what are we going to do? We are going to, you know, let's, let's do this live radio style. I'm going to share my screen and while we're live on the interwebs, I'm going to uh, build the PowerPoint and do the deployment uh, and all of that. Uh, let's see here, screen two over there. All right, what's going down? There we go. My logo is squished, but I will deal with that later. That's because I pulled this uh, slide over from uh, another slide deck that had a different, um, what do you call it, display ratio. Okay, so what are we going to do? We are going to um, plan um, data-driven web app. And we're going to plan it using Azure DevOps. Too many spaces in there. So we'll start with an Azure DevOps project. By the way, if you're just tuning in, this is totally live radio style. We're uh, putting together the content of the webinar, the demo for the webinar and everything live, live and direct on YouTube. So you don't think there's anything hidden under my sleeves. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna plan the data-driven web app in Azure, uh, in Azure DevOps rather. And then we are going to, what? We're going to build the data, we'll just, from here on out, we'll call it the app. Build the app um, in Visual Studio, the community edition, 2019. Uh, and then we are going to, what the hell, let's test it too. Uh, we're going to test, um, or automate acceptance tests uh, with Cucumber in Visual Studio, AKA SpecFlow. Specflow. 
And then what? And then we are going to implement continuous integration. And then, you know what? Let's shorten that up and, and use the acronym that I love to hate. We're going to implement CI CD. You know why I hate that, Ron? Why is that? Because I don't know what CD they're talking about. When, when people say CI CD, CI is continuous integration, and CD could be continuous delivery or it could be continuous deployment. And uh, those, those are two, well, I was going to say two very different things, but they're not that different, but they're different enough to be annoying. Yeah. So tell me which CD you're talking about. Cause one's a lot easier. No, I shouldn't say that. One's a lot. They both do different things. There you go. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> they, they do different shit. Yeah. So um, anyway, so the CI CD that we're talking about here is actually both CI CDs. Um, and basically it's continuous delivery means that we're ready and able to deploy to any supported platform at any time. And continuous deployment means we actually are deploying. You know, so we're actually deploying somewhere. So that's that's a little scarier. That means everything has to be on point because if something's messed up, then you're deploying your failures. So you want to make sure everything is thoroughly tested, which is what we're going to use SpecFlow for. But anyway, we're going to do both CDs. So I'm going to say, yes, both of them. <laughs> uh, and then finally, we're going to... Uh, we're going to update. Uh, no, we're going to force an update. Force an update to staging. Um, I'm going to go get me a beverage. I'll be right back. Every commit. All right. All right, there we go. So that's what we're going to do. And we are going to do this stuff uh, over the next um, few weeks. We would do uh, one of these webinars per week. And uh, maybe if, if I, I get uh, really bored and stressed out on this lockdown, maybe we'll do more than one a week. But uh, one a week is easy. And we'll probably end up repeating the same one multiple times uh, during the week in case you miss it. Uh, and, and maybe, Ron, you can use all the different recordings that we do and, and make the, the best, uh, the best of the best with no yeah. F-bombs or only F-bombs that are funny. <laughs> so we're gonna plan the data-driven web app in Azure DevOps. We're gonna uh, build uh, the app in Visual Studio Community 2019. We're gonna automate acceptance tests with Cucumber, AKA SpecFlow. And then we're gonna implement CI, CD. Yes, both of them. Um, oh, I should have said um, using Azure DevOps. or with, because it's less characters, Azure DevOps. And then finally, we'll force an update. But I really don't like that roll over, that text wrap. I'm trying to get it to be one with the single line. I think this line to move. I'll be happy. This blue line does not want to cooperate. Is that part of the background image? That would be extremely annoying if that was the case. I think it is. This little line right here. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I think it's part of the background graphic because I can't select it and move it. Oh, oh well. Oh, well, I'll worry about that later. So <laughs> I'm, I'm being a bit of a perfectionist. I don't like the way these these bullet points laid out, but oh, well, I'll, I'll let it slide for now. Okay, so um, I digress back to the original show. There, I'll take, I'll take my funny stuff out and now it all fits on one line nicely. All right, so first up, let's plan our data-driven uh, web app using Azure DevOps. 
Um, I'm going to do a quick overview of all of these things, and then we'll dive deeper into each one of them in the coming webinars. So really what we're talking about here uh, is we are going to go into our planning tool and our planning tool is Azure DevOps. If you're not familiar with Azure DevOps, uh, it's Microsoft's tool uh, that is similar to, for our purposes here, similar to Atlassian's Jira, uh, which is a planning tool that we can use to document our user stories and their associated delivery team tasks. So to that end, I am going to go to uh, a demo environment that I use here that we will call DevOps Classroom. Just signing in on my other screen here. I think I can be Antoine Victor. I may have to switch to being DevOps student now. That looks like we're good. Okay. So here in the DevOps classroom, I'm going to create a new project. What should we call the project, Ron? Uh, this, uh, intro or just <laughs> fun, you know? Intro, why not? Let's, let's call it Intro to Agile Planning. Nah, that's not going to be a good name for it. Ah, what the hell? Intro to Agile. Good enough. And public, private, it doesn't really matter for our purposes here. I suppose I can... Certain features like Team Foundation version control are not supported. Well, we might as well make it private then because I do for this demo want to use Team Foundation version control as opposed to Git. Uh, I'll, I'll get into more detail about the differences between the two in a future demo. But uh, one of the things that I want to illustrate uh, here is uh, only available in Team Foundation version control. So I'm going to go create. And while that project is creating in the background, uh, the app that I had you guys download, uh, Visual Studio, I actually have that running already in the background here, but uh, I'm going to bring it across to my other screen here, and I'm going to start a new project because this is a production app that I have that I'm working on here, but I want to build a data-driven web application. And the language that I'm gonna build it in is C-sharp. Uh, I used to think in Visual Basic, but uh, now I think with curly braces and semicolons. So we're gonna do it in C-sharp. Uh, and I can choose my platform here. You don't have to do this. You can select it from the list. They're all available in the list there. But we are on the Windows platform here. I'm gonna be publishing to a Azure uh, Windows server. And the project type that I want to build, well, I want to build a web type project. So I'm going to select the web um, filter there. And then I have uh, a couple of different choices, a few different choices here. ASP.NET Core Web Application, which is cool if you want to deploy your application to a uh, more inexpensive Linux box, or if you're running Mac OS, and you want to be able to run locally. Um, it can also deploy to Windows or any cloud service provider that's out there. Um, I'm actually going to stick with a more traditional ASP.NET web application, which requires that we run on the uh, Windows platform, uh, whether it be in the cloud or um, on our local machine or a virtual machine somewhere, it's gotta be Windows. Now, there's th what I'm doing, what I'm gonna do in this app would work just fine in a core web application. Uh, I'm just going with the more traditional route uh, so I don't have to think too much. <laughs> can do this one on autopilot. All right, so we're gonna call the web app, what we say we're gonna call it Intro to Agile. Uh, by the way, the name here, Intro to Agile um, App. I'm just calling it App just, just for spite. Uh, just to illustrate that it doesn't have to be exactly the same as the name of the project that we created over here in Azure DevOps. So I'm gonna come back over here and my project, is going to be our web user interface. I'm going to call it web UI. And our solution down here is going to hold not only our web UI, but also our test project 
um, and our cucumber stuff and whatever else we decide to add to this thing. So the solution is like a folder that holds all of our projects. So we don't want it to be called web UI. We're just going to call it app. I'm going to hit create. And um, then I'm going to select MVC, which stands for model view controller, basically gives us a easier way to build and test our web application. And I'm going to tell it that I want to authenticate. I want people to log in to access the subscribers only content. Uh, and I also want people to be able to log in using their Facebook uh, or their Google accounts, All right? So uh, we'll do that in a, a later webinar. But for now, I want to enable that feature so I have the capability of coding it later. And then uh, because we want to do some test-driven development later, I'm going to tell it to also create a test for unit tests, the tests in our test-driven development. And then I'm going to help tell it to create. Now, at this point, I haven't written any code. I haven't done anything terribly exciting. I just set up my project that we're now going to go back over to Azure DevOps and do a little more detailed planning. So this is just some of, some of what um, the development team, the test team, and others might do while um, waiting for uh, the preliminary planning and um, requirements gathering to be done by uh, the product owner, analysts, and so forth. All right, so now we're gonna put on our, our product owner hats and we are going to do a very basic and quick uh, collection of requirements. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be a, a pretty basic application. So it will have very basic requirements. Uh, by the way, um, once we're done setting this up and editing the, uh, the process, the instructions and whatnot, uh, we will publish a few blog posts as well as um, a full webinar with the uh, instruction guide and virtual machines provided so you can follow along with the demo. Uh, you are getting to experience the build process live on YouTube right now. So uh, the final product here will be a uh, two to four hour webinar with uh, lab instructions and virtual machines where you can follow along and, and do what I'm doing here. I don't expect that you, you will be able to follow along with what I'm doing here live if you've never done this before. So this is not intended as a uh, follow along demo. This is just uh, Ron and I kind of messing around building some stuff because uh, we're locked down at home. <laughs> so more fun to do it this way. Anywho, uh, let's see, where was I? So we're gonna add a new work item. These work items will be listed in the instruction guide, but um, our very basic setup here is as a new user, um, I need to register uh, my account so that I can uh, log in and access subscriber, let's, let's just call it member for now. Member, oops, <laughs> members, <laughs> memblers. <laughs> It's members only. Members? Content. The members. <laughs> members only. All right. So uh, as a new user, I need to register uh, my account so that I can access members only content. Um, what else do I need to do? Um, I need to access mem members only content. And I don't want to get too deep into the code here, but we have to have at least a couple of features. Um, as a registered user, I want to log in using Facebook or using my Facebook account, my existing Facebook account, existing Facebook account, um, so that 
I don't have to remember remember <laughs> uh, too many passwords and usernames. I did that kind of dyslexic and backwards, but you know what I mean. Um, there we go. Okay. I, for, for our simple demo, I think that's, that's probably uh, 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 enough requirements here. Uh, we can log in. We can access the member members only content, and we can register. Um, that's all we're really going to do. Is this this webinar isn't really about the coding process. It's more about what happens from end to end uh, in a continuous delivery, continuous deployment, continuous integration uh, pipeline. So those requirements should be sufficient. But let's let's go a little bit deeper by uh, going into our user story here. Why is my user story not open? All right, let's go boards then. Hello, is it Jim Reading? Low connection. That means it's time to sip on my Stella. <laughs> I, I decided I didn't feel like going down to my desk. I'm in the comfy chair in the living room. Hey, we have to get our uh, get our Fortnite on after this. Got to do a little work before we play. It's just too <laughs> early to get that. It really, he's like, I only Fortnite at night. <laughs> yeah, I, I was uh, when when you hit me up, I was at Lowe's. Oh, were you? Yeah, I was at Eagle. I was uh doing some research, man. I'm, I need to buy this. Uh, it's called a uh, roofing. I don't know. I got a leak in one of my roof in the roof, you know, in the back. Oh, uh, your roof is leaking. Yeah, a little that bit. That's all right though. I mean, I know how to fix Oops. it. It just I waited till it, uh, the weather gets got gotten better you know so i could get up yeah. on that roof and... there you go yeah all right so i finally got this uh this user story up here so what, what i want to do here is add some more detailed um acceptance criteria so we know what's supposed to be built we, we basically said as a registered user um i said actually i said as a registered i didn't say user as a registered user I want to log in using my existing Facebook account so I don't have to remember uh, too many passwords um, and usernames. That should have been plural. There we go. Okay, now that I've corrected my grammatical errors, uh, the acceptance criteria. Given a valid Facebook account, when I attempt to log in, and let's be a little more specific and say, given I have a valid Facebook and Google account too, right? Because some people well, we'll do Google sep we'll do Google separately because this is a specifically a Facebook requirement. Oh, okay. Okay. And and I actually happen to know from personal experience because I just did this with some contractors recently. Um, the process of doing Google and Facebook is very, very similar. Uh, it's actually pretty straightforward, but if you try to contract this out uh, to, to subcontractors using GoWork or, or Fiverr or any, any of these uh, um, gig sites, um, if you bundle them together, it's a lot more expensive and the requirement gets bloated. If you single them out separately, number one, it's easier to track but number two, it's a, it's a smaller requirement. And number three, uh, once you've done one, you can basically duplicate that code or not duplicate the code because that would be bad programming practice. But you can uh, um, reuse some of that code uh, so that you can reduce the cost or reduce the effort required to do the other one. So once you do Facebook, you take that and then you do Google and it's cheaper to do Google. But if you try to do them both at the same time separately or, or put them both on the same contract, it gets more expensive. Oh. So 
um, we're going to do one. And like, if we were to, if we were contracting this out or even if we were assigning it to developers or we're letting developers, uh, um, pull this off of the backlog, uh, what I would prefer to do is have this user story in a separate sprint from the other one, meaning that, uh, this week we do Facebook next week we do Google and we use what we learn from, uh, from Google First to do week Facebook the next week. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Whereas if you have two people doing it in parallel, they're going to make the same mistakes at the same time and you won't be able to use the lessons from one to make the other more efficient. I mean, that that's, that's in my humble opinion that that's in, in mo no means written in stone anywhere, but that's how I would approach it, especially based on my most recent experience contracting this out. Um, so when I, when we attempt to log in here, what do we expect to happen? Um, when I attempt to log in, oh, um, then I should be presented with an option to use my, <laughs> my good <laughs> Lord, my <laughs> Facebook account. <laughs> there. Uh, uh, it doesn't like it when I have the capital B and it doesn't like it when I have no capitals at all. <laughs> Facebook like that, man. Yeah. Now, um, <laughs> so now I need to also say, uh, so I said I should be presented with the option. Um, given I have chosen the login with Facebook option <laughs> uh, when I enter my face Facebook credentials Priority one message from Starfleet coming in on the spell credentials channel. wrong yes I did uh, then I am taken to where do I want to be taken to? Um, after we log in the members only page, uh, the profile page, uh, let's just say the members only page, the members only Page. Let's put this thing on silent. All right. Um, I, I should say when I successfully because there might be an unhappy path. Well, what do we want to ha happen when I Fail to log in. Uh, actually, let's let's solve this next problem first. Um, actually, you know, I'm typically against conjunctions in my uh, acceptance criteria statements, but I'm going to say and my name, email, and profile picture are captured. I don't know if I'm going to get to that, that uh, requirement in this webinar, but that's typically what you want to have happen. Uh, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll leave that and we'll ignore the unhappy path for now. Oh, shit, didn't mean to paste that in there. That's that. <laughs> Somehow I pasted the PowerPoint in there. Um, but for the sake of example, unhappy path, when I unsuccessfully uh, enter my Facebook credentials, then I am taken to the friendly error page. Error. That makes me feel warm and fuzzy. <laughs> not angry <laughs> now, obviously in the real world well not obviously it depends on the kind of environment that you work in i guess but you probably wouldn't put that that 
that kind of detail into acceptance criteria. But uh, if you work for me, you would, because it would make me smile and I would buy you beers later. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, moving right along, that's our first user story and acceptance criteria. Um, let's add a little bit of acceptance criteria to this other one. As a new user, I need to register my account so I can log in and access members only content. Um, oops. So given. Did you check out that video I sent you, Tuan? Uh, the one about the, the, the Tesla car. Yeah. The mini Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I had seen, um, I, I'd seen that all the videos that he was referencing and kind of was thinking the same thing, but they haven't actually made the announcement yet. It's just, they're, they're doing that China design center and all the cars in China are typically smaller cars. So it's yeah, probably the car that comes out is probably going to be a smaller car, but that probably won't be for another year or two. Right? They're amping it though. I mean, if they're talking about it, they got yeah. drawings. And stuff. Oh yeah. It's definitely coming. Oh yeah. You know, it's coming. coming. Yeah. You gotta, oh. you gotta have a, a electric car. That's less than, less than 30 K. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, everybody can't get one. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't doesn't do us I, any good if only rich people are driving them. Yeah, <laughs> I thought you liked that, man. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. Totally. All right. So, what am I supposed to have here? Uh, uh, the, um, um, a login. Facebook given login. I, yeah, this this one is the regular login. So I guess I would say, given I given I have chosen the to uh to register with email and password when i enter oops my valid email address and i should have just came over to your house to and then we could have just did this at your pad you know yeah, well, we need to record the shit anyway or we didn't really need to but you know it's easy i guess you could have recorded it with you here too <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying next time because then I, I it's just a lot more better when you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah, and I'm, I'm probably gonna fire up the fire pit later on too it's not raining finally yeah just yeah next yeah. time you know uh, yeah, yeah, next time. Yeah. Um, invalid email address and um, pass strong password. Then. Yeah, the <laughs> To the uh, members only page. There. All right, that's enough acceptance right here. You get the idea. So that's the stuff that tells us what we're supposed to build. So I guess technically we kind of did some of this already because when I created the project over here in choosing um, authentication, uh, I'm actually already set it up to allow for registration and um, what you call it and uh, using Facebook and stuff. I haven't set up the detailed code yet, but the, the um, beginnings of that are here. So let's let's take a peek here. Uh, I just started debugging, so I'm running the app that I just built. Remember, I didn't write any code. I haven't no. technically done anything yet. Yeah. Uh, all I did was create a new project from the template. Yeah. So yeah. this this is what that project template looks like without me doing anything. I checked a couple of check boxes, and this this is what we get. Really basic web application. ASP.NET is a free web framework for building great websites and applications using HTML cascading style sheets and JavaScript. And it makes this little, these little columns where the information in here is obviously not something that you'd want on your website, but the way that this page is built out, all you really have to do is go in here and change this text to whatever you want it to say. And just like that, you've got a website without any programming or anything like that. And what's really cool about this, uh, this template is it uses bootstrap, which is, um, a method of coding the HTML um, that allows you to build things like this menu really easily. Uh, and these columns that actually expand and collapse 
based on what type of device you're on or what size screen you have. Watch what happens when I stretch the uh, browser and make it smaller. See, as the browser gets too small, the menu changes to a hamburger oh. menu. They call it the hamburger menu because it looks like uh, a, a bun with a piece of meat yeah. in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it switched from just the, the laid out menu to the hamburger menu and these uh, columns switched to rows. So now getting started, uh, get more libraries and uh, whatever the other one was. Uh, wasn't there a third? How come I can't scroll? Wait, because you probably got it on that. With, I don't know. I'm trying to use my touchpad. I, I should have grabbed oh, my mouse. Oh, that new new. Yeah, yeah. I should have yeah, grabbed my mouse for this. I don't know <laughs> where my mouse is. <laughs> my mouse got away. Anyway, oh, there it is way over there on the table. Anyhow, you see how when I stretch it back out, it makes three columns. And when I stretch it in, it switches to rows that I can't scroll to. But you get the idea here if I do this. Oh, that's duh, that's why. I can't scroll because it just stretched over to my other monitor. Oh. <laughs> there, now I can scroll. Ah, <laughs> uh, brilliant. Brilliant, you just have to pay attention. All right, so. <laughs> It, without, I didn't really do anything just because the, the template uses bootstrap, it does that. So I can easily go in here and uh, change some of the text on say um, the home page view. So if I go to home and index the home page, this is where it has that text. So I can change getting started, oops, to my cool new website. Oh, I get it now. You did all this already. Yeah, no, I didn't do any of this. This is what, when I just said new project and I used that template, it did yeah. all of this for me. Yeah. So uh -huh. just by downloading Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition and then going to the file menu, just like I did earlier, file, yeah, yeah. new, project oh. once I all that stuff that I chose earlier automatically yeah. created all this for me so now I'm just going and I'm changing some of the text um, let's see here so I changed so instead of ASP.net up here my cool new website and then I can change this text to be whatever I want buy my products Oops, got to spell buy right Buy yeah. my products. So it it follow basically me on YouTube. Yeah, I get it. And basically Instagram. It wrote, it wrote all the uh, mini um, code for you already as a template. So yep, most yeah, of the heavy lifting has already been done. I get it. I get it. Okay, so I, I you see I made those little changes in yeah. Visual Studio. Yeah. I'm gonna save the file, and then we're gonna switch over back over here to the browser and uh, Google Chrome. We were looking at it right now. See how it says ASP.net, yeah. And ASP.net is a free web uh, web framework. Blah 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 blah. And getting started, I'm going to hit refresh. Refresh. Now it says my cool new website. Yeah. Buy my products. Follow me on YouTube and Instagram, and read my blog posts. My cool new website. Blah 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 blah. Now, obviously, I don't want to change the colors. It's not very colorful or pretty. It's it's ugly. In fact, it's pretty bland, black and white. So I could go to, now this isn't what this webinar is supposed to be about, but since we're on this topic anyway, I could go to Fiverr, oops, uh, is it two R's .com, or is it two V's? It is two R's. <laughs> I, could go to, I could go to Fiverr. Yeah. And in Fiverr, I could look for a uh, graphic designer web. I guess I could have said graphic web designer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, where did it show up? So here we go. We got a, uh, yeah, yeah, use cookies. I got it. That's fine. Um, build your brand logo design, customize your WordPress site, share your voiceover, uh, some graphic design, digital marketing, writing and translation, video and animation. So I could find somebody. And if I was really trying to do a, a video about using Fiverr, uh, we could just click on a couple of links here and see how much some, 
it's giving me a hard time because I'm not signed in. I don't feel like doing that. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. My, my point was simply that I could find somebody on Fiverr probably for 20 or 30 bucks that could give me a, a pretty decent uh, HTML and CSS design that would make this look prettier with background images and a cool logo and whatnot. So for the, for 30 bucks, I could slap that on top of this and presto change. my cool new website has dope ass graphics. I mean, cool graphics and everybody loves it. And all I really had to do was say file new project. So anyway, I'm going to be a new user and I'm going to register right now. All we have is um, email and password option. The Facebook option isn't here yet. So I'm going to register as a new user uh, with a fake email address because I haven't turned on email verification yet. But a at b dot com is my email. And my password is going to be capital J U S T capital M three hundred exclamation point. So J U S T M three hundred exclamation point. Just me or just M three hundred exclamation point. And if those matched, then I should get a successful registration. Boom, pow, presto, changeo. Um, don't bother saving that. I am registered and it says, hello, a at b.com. Welcome to the members only area of the website, which is exactly the same as every other area of the website because we haven't built anything that's members only yet. We'll get to that in a later demo. Anyway, for now, we're done. That um, built our, our web app. And the reason that I did that registration, it's just a nifty little trick in this tool that we're using that automatically built a database for us uh, that we'll later deploy to Azure. Uh, probably not next week's demo, but the demo after that. Um, so but uh, if, go that ahead. database, does it have like unlimited um, storage? Like I, I know that database is gonna keep and save that A at B, you know, that person yeah well on my on my local machine here yeah it, it has um what does that local database have i, I want to say you know it has a four gigabyte i want to say it has a four gigabyte limit but uh don't quote me on that let me double check i'll i'll, I'll let you know later yeah, um in fact I'll, I'll put the details in the description but it either has a four gigabyte limit or uh the limit is the size of your hard drive once we deploy it to azure the limit will be specified by how much we pay <laughs> so I think for free, That's what I was thinking. That's what for I was thinking. free, I want to say you get like two gigabytes max, but, um, for a, a little bit more money a month, like a couple bucks a month, you can get, you can add gigabytes to it. Well, so hard drive space is cheap. It's, it's not, it's not a really big deal, but for, for free, you're limited to two, if I remember correctly on, on uh, Azure, but over here on our hard drive, um, depending on what software that we have loaded, the local database, which is a, just a file, I wanna say that has a, a four gig limit, but uh, it might've expanded. So again, don't quote me on that, but for our purposes here on the local machine, we'd most likely never go over that, that four gigabytes, because, even two gig, gigabytes for that matter, because we're not gonna have customer data here. We're just gonna be kind of playing around and building something. And then once we're done building it, then we would push it out to Azure. We'd push it out to um, AWS or to Rackspace or someplace in the cloud where there's lots and lots of storage. And if we run out of space, we just give them more money and it expands. So I don't want you to think that that hard drive space is something that we have to worry about. Um, it's just, we need enough space to store our tests on our local yeah. machine. And then yeah. once we go, once we push it out and go public, then yeah, if we need more space, we give them a couple it. more dollars a month and they expand our space and we're good. So, but the reason that I registered is because, uh, let me, can I get a refresh? There we go. Because um, registering told the system, hey, he's trying to register. Do we have some place to store that registration information? No? Oh crap, we better create some place. So it basically created the database on the fly and that's what we had, that's why I had to refresh. And now if we look here, our default connection, by the way, if I go look in my configuration file, there's a reference to the default connection right here. And the default connection just says, build a local database, a local uh, MS SQL uh, local database that's going to just be an attached file name that's going to go in the directory 
that this application is in, the ASP Net, uh, and it's going to be called ASP Net Intro to Agile App Web UI, and then today's date, 2020, uh, 5 7. So May, May 7th, um, 2020, and then a unique identifier, 123643.mdf, master data file. And the initial catalog or the name of the database. The name of the database is ASP Net Intro to Agile App Web UI, and then that same unique identifier. And it's telling us that we're going to use integrated security or window security to log in. Anyway, long story short, that's why over here in the Server Explorer, we now have something called default connection because it matches up with that. And if we look in that default connection in the tables folder, that default connection has a table called ASP.NET users. And if we right click on that and say, show table data. Give me one second, Twan. I'm about to go grab yeah. me another beer. There's right my A.A at B.com. That email that we just registered has been created. I don't have to go get my beer because I have my beer right here. My chalice is no longer frozen, though. Let's do it. Cheers, bro. Mm -hmm. Cheers, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say I forgot to put another chalice in the freezer, but that was my last Stella anyway. <laughs> that's, that's why I decided to drink it. I only had one. Might as well put it out of its misery. It was getting lonely in the fridge. <laughs> yeah, you said I'm about to have a beverage. I was like, oh, man, is it too early? I was like, oh. Right? Man. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, in, in Pakistan, it's uh, it's, one, like, oh, it's 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The developers are sleeping. Actually, no, Usman's pretty hardcore. He's probably up. <laughs> yeah, probably. You never know. People... People of people. <laughs> all right. Anyway, so that that's our account. We're all set there. I think that's 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 uh, just about good for this demo. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and shrink this down. I, I'm not gonna commit anything to source control yet. Actually, you know what? Let me let me take this one step further. Since I went all the way over here to the database piece, um, we'll at least finish the the development side uh, or the build side of this process. I'm going to take this default connection and I'm going to browse to it in the SQL Server Object Explorer. You can see that right there. But I'm going to open this up in there. And uh, you can see by the name that it selected it automatically for me. Uh, but just to verify, it's today's date, 2020-0507. And then 123643 was our unique identifier. Uh, so now SQL Server or our local instance of SQL Server uh, Management Studio here, or Object Explorer, knows that there's a database that we can now create a project from. Before I create that project, though, I want to make sure I know what folder that this um, web app is in. So I'm going to um, not add it to source control, but I'm going to look at its properties. I click on the solution, look at properties, and I'm going to copy this path. And now I'm going to come back over here to the um, SQL Server Object Explorer. I'm going to say create new project. And I'm going to use the path that I just copied. Come on. Except I'm going to delete the name of the file. and go there. And I'm going to call my database intros, intro, <laughs> intro, intro uh, <laughs> to agile it. database. So now that's the project that I can use if I need to customize my database later on and use evolutionary database design. All right. So now I have pretty much all of my projects set up. In the, yeah. next, uh, in the next demo, we'll focus on getting that testing stuff done. Um, and then after we have our, uh, well, now that we have all of our projects all set up, 
we get our testing set up. Uh, we'll do a little bit of coding just to illustrate um, um, test driven development. Um, and then we'll use those tests and the little bit of code that we have here to implement continuous integration uh, and then continuous delivery and finally finishing up with continuous deployment in Azure. Um, real quick though, before we, we close this out, um, in pipelines in Azure DevOps, this is where we are going to configure um, our continuous integration. I'm going to do this very quickly just to wet your whistle uh, and encourage you to watch next week's uh, demo, which at which point we'll kind of repeat uh, what we've done here uh, along with uh, releasing the blog post with some of the instructions, uh, as well as moving into more detail with this um, build pipeline that I'm going to quickly uh, materialize before your eyes. So uh, next week uh, in our demo, we'll go into a little more detail on creating uh, a build pipeline for our um, agile project here. So I'm just going to walk through it real quick here without explaining in too much detail um, how we're in, or rather implementing continuous integration. So you ready, Ron? Don't blink. You might miss it. <laughs> uh, maybe not if, if, the, if the page keeps taking so dang long to load so what you basically did is you created two projects one was your first one you copied your first one with that path and now you're, you're ready to deviate from your first one and you could you could professionally do your second one if you wanted to do it better or add it on or, or something else right? well, so what, what i've got here it's, it's really all part of the same project um okay. so we've got the the website Right, the so that the pages, yeah, I, I the page that. that you'd actually browse to, that's that's yeah. intro to agile web UI. Yeah, and then you that's the, the first piece way. there, and then I, I copied the path to that, and I went yeah. and I created this project, the intro to agile database project. So that's actually part of the same solution, right? So the oh. website is the the front end, and then yeah. the database is the back end, the back end, right? So when on on the website, when I register, it stores the information in the database. And so if I wanted to deploy this to a, another server somewhere, I need to have all of that shit, right? I need to have both the website and the database that the website needs to know who's logging in. So yeah. what I did in that last step was I just created the project so I could deploy the database out to Azure when we do that uh, in the next demo. All right, now I, I could, what I could have done is I could have just manually created the database uh, or I actually, I also could have let the system automatically create the database uh, when I publish it to Azure. But this, the way that I've done it here allows me to go and make changes in the future and have those changes automatically pushed out to production. Yeah, that's why you have like a pathway set up, right? Right, yeah. I wanted to make sure they were all set to the same path and they were stored in the same location. Really, really all I did is if we go and look in Windows Explorer, let me bring up an Explorer window here. We go look in the file explorer. All that I did, uh, let me just bring it up here on the other screen. All I did there is I told it, let's see, where is that stuff? That stuff's in the users folder under uh, me and source. And that is repos, I think. And what I call it, my cool web app. So all I did by, by copying that, that path is I told it when you create the folder for the new project, put it in the same folder as this other stuff that I've already created. I've got my, my, my cool web app UI, my cool web app UI tests and my. Yeah. yeah. Corona DB hey, oh, I haven't made it yet. That's, that's an old app that shouldn't be in the same folder. Oh, you know what, what it is, is everything. Yeah. So here's the, the web app. I haven't saved that database project yet. So technically it doesn't really exist. Uh, my cool web app, app UI test. And once I save that, um, my cool web app DB will be in here. So let's, oh no, it's intro. Oh, wait, I'm in my cool. It's not my cool. It's intro. I was in the wrong folder. It's this folder and it is already there. So it did save already. I thought I hadn't saved it yet. So 
intro to agile app web UI, intro to agile app web UI tests, and intro to agile app DB. That whole process was basically just copying files to the same folder. So there's, our, there's some uh, information over here for creating the database. And I just told it to save that information in the same folder that the website is saved in. Okay. Yeah. So now that we've done that, um, I can uh, now that we've done that uh, in the next demo, we can add it to source control, but that's just going to be right click add solution to source control. But before we do that, <clears throat> uh, I want to go through some more settings in uh, source control and we'll do that in the next demo. But again, for now, real quick, um, in the next demo, we will add a little bit of tests to that project so that as we set up continuous integration, we have tests that can be run in an automated way. So we chose team foundation version control earlier. I'm gonna choose that again. And then I'm gonna accept the defaults on the next screen when it finally comes up. Team foundation version control, and I'm gonna continue. As soon as it's done thinking about it, there we go. I'm just gonna hit continue. And then we built an ASP.NET web application. So I'm gonna select that as my template. And then about the, the pages are loading so slow because I'm live streaming or uh, Zooming or Zoom, yeah. just because too many people are watching Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. I'm going to enable code coverage. I'll talk about what that is in the next demo. And because I'm vendor locked into the Microsoft stack here, uh, and enabling continuous integration is as simple as checking a checkbox. And also there's this nifty little thing only available in Team Foundation version control called gated check-ins. Um, I shouldn't say only available in Team Foundation version control, but on the Microsoft stack, your choices, Team Foundation version control um, or Git. Uh, and in those two environments of those two, only Team Foundation version control allows you to enable gated check-ins with a simple checkbox. You can do that on other platforms, but it's a, a quite a bit more involved with the exception of the Atlassian platform. All right, I'm gonna save that. Oh wait, no, under options, I'm gonna ch save, uh, change one more thing. If the, any of the tests fails or our code does not compile or build successfully, that is, I'm gonna have it create a work item. The type of work item I'm gonna create is going to be a bug. So if you submit bad code to source control, uh, if your code is bad, or if it doesn't pass any of the tests, or if it doesn't meet the acceptance criteria, then I am going to assign a bug, or rather create a bug and assign it to the requester. The requester is whoever checked in that bad code. Basically, if you check in the bad code, you're requesting that the system build that bad code and test that bad code. And if you request that the system builds your code and tests it and it's bad, then we're going to create a bug and assign it to you because you write bad code. We're basically <laughs> saying, you suck, get that shit out of here. Yeah, the bug, <laughs> the bug ain't going to let that person ride that. Yeah. Right? So yeah. if you don't check this checkbox or rather flip this toggle switch, then people that do bad work can just slip that stuff in and it makes it into source control. And then the next morning, everybody comes in. They're like, what the hell? I can't do anything. The code's all messed up. Who did this? Oh, Twan, you're drinking too many beers and you checked that bad code in last yeah. night. That's another anti-pattern, by the way, alcohol-fueled development or thinking, <laughs> I write great code when I'm drunk. <laughs> right? So uh, we turn this on to protect ourselves from ourselves or from whoever's writing, thinking they write great code when they're drunk. We're going to block that bad code. We're going to assign a bug to them. Now, there's other stuff that we could create. We could create a, an issue, maybe not as as uh, as um, big as a bug. Uh, we could create a user story, not sure why you really wanna do that. We create a test case, you know, if there's something that doesn't seem to be working right, let's run it through some more tests and see what's going on. We create a task for somebody to perform. We create a feature that seems a little, little big for a build failed or a test failed. 
uh, or uh, you could create an epic if it was an epic failure. No, just that's not why you'd create an epic. But I just like to say that. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're gonna leave it as, as bug. Bug is fine for this scenario. I can All see right. why it has like a user um, notepad or whatever that you had down there. Like uh, the user could like write why they they uh, messed up or why they wrote bad code or whatever. Yeah, you gotta uh, create a task for them to go explain themselves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> explain yourself, son. Yeah. Uh, we haven't built anything yet, so I'm not going to queue it. I'm just going to save that. Um, I'm not going to put any comments in here, but normally if you're in a, a, a larger team environment, you want to let your teammates know what's going on and, and, and what you did. Uh, so let's just say it did some stuff. <laughs> Never do that in production. We want something more descriptive that says what stuff it is that we did, but you get the idea. All right. So uh, with that, we'll, we'll go ahead and call the demo here uh, with a little bit of summary. What we've done thus far is um, hopefully you've gotten uh, Visual Studio downloaded because if you want to follow along with the demos, which again, in the next demo, I'll pretty much repeat most of, of what I did here. I'll just do it a little bit more rapidly, but we'll provide you with a blog post that has some of the instructions. In fact, uh, some of those instructions are already available uh, currently. So uh, when we're done here, I'll add some, uh, some links in the description that show where you can find some of those existing blog posts and even some, some existing uh, YouTube videos that we've already done show how to set up Visual Studio and uh, SpecFlow and, and some of the other tools that we'll be using here. So uh, from the top, basically what we did is we created a um, project in Azure DevOps called Intro to Agile. And that project had a couple of very basic requirements uh, that we added onto our backlog. Uh, and in our backlog here, we can see that we have added two user stories. Um, well, if we look at our backlog, uh, they're in order for this particular project. Those IDs that you were looking at there were for this entire account. So for all the backlog items that have ever been created, there's apparently 1,171 of them. Um, uh, choosing a different link makes it load slow. But uh, anyway, once this once this comes up, you'll see in our backlog, we have two items ordered number one and number two, uh, basically in the order that they were added there. So user story number one, user story number two, uh, the first one being as a registered user, I want to log in using my Facebook uh, so that my existing Facebook should have set account so that I don't have to remember too many passwords and usernames. Uh, and then as a... Um, register or as a new user, I need to register my account so that I can log in and access members only content. Now, probably we want that one at the top because you need to register before you can log in as a registered user. So see how I just dragged it and dropped it to reorder. Yeah. Uh, we, add, we added some acceptance criteria in here and then we went in to our um, pipelines area here and we created a build pipeline. I uh, walk through that rather quickly. We'll focus more on the build pipeline and the setup of continuous integration in the next demo. Um, and in a demo quite a bit after that, we will delve into the release pipeline, which if I click on it here, you'll notice is pretty much identical to um, the build pipeline area until we click new pipeline and actually start to build it. More on that later. So um, in Visual Studio, we just have our new project that we created that in the next demo, I will finally add to source control at which point it will appear in Azure DevOps in our repo. Right now, our repo is completely empty because we have not published anything yet to our repo. All right, so that is the beginning of the, um, what we call this full stack uh, web app development on the Microsoft stack where uh, over the next few weeks, we will build a web-based application with a um, database on the back end, SQL Server in this scenario, and we will set up a, a automated build and test run. Uh, and then finally, we will set up an automated deployment to the, the cloud environment. So stay tuned for that. Um, you can check back later if, uh, if we, uh, didn't drop too many F-bombs in this video. We'll edit it up and then drop that on the YouTube channel for you to consume at a later point in time. Otherwise, stay tuned for the next webinar. Uh, if you're watching, thanks for doing so. Uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon to be notified when the next video comes out, and we'll see you on the next video.